So happy to be here with you today as we start the beginning of a new school year, your second day of school, to celebrate the first Mass of our school year. I hope that you had a fun summer, you did lots of fun things, and you're excited to be back here with all your friends and ready to learn all sorts of new things from your teachers this year. I'm really excited too, since this is not only my first school Mass to, with you, but it's my first school year with you being the new priest here. So if you don't remember what my name is, my name is Father Vogel. So, and I'll be seeing you guys in your classrooms, be able to come in and visit you. I can't wait to help all of you, all your families and your teachers and everybody in our churches to be able to grow and learn more about God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so today, at this first Mass, I'm wearing red because I'm celebrating a Mass of the Holy Spirit at the beginning of a new school year. So when we celebrate a Mass of the Holy Spirit, we're coming to ask God to send the Holy Spirit to fill everything that we do throughout our whole school year. We want all of the Holy Spirit's fruits and gifts to be in what we do. We're asking for His wisdom and His guidance. Come, Holy Spirit, guide all of our teachers and our students. Guide our school. So we might wonder, well, what will that do? What will the Holy Spirit do for us this school year? What happens when we ask for his help? Well, some really amazing things can happen when we ask for God's help, when we ask for the Holy Spirit. And our first reading today kind of has an example of this, of what the Holy Spirit can do. Though, if you're listening closely when you heard that first reading, it might have sounded a little strange. Maybe even a little creepy or gross. Because in that first reading, we have a prophet, Ezekiel. He sees a bunch of bones lying around on the ground. And these are bones from people who had died. And they must have been dead for a really long time because the bones were all really dry. And they were all white, having been in the sun for a long time. But then... Suddenly, all these bones start moving around. They start rattling against each other. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was there and there was a bunch of bones lying on the ground, they all started rattling around and moving around, that might be a little scary, seeing all these bones start moving. And then, on these bones, as these bones are beginning to move around, it says muscles and skin started growing on these bones. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe a little gross, right? It's pretty weird. And then, as the bones and the the muscles and the skin on there are all growing, they all start growing together back into people again. And the people start walking around. Now, I don't know, that sounds kind of like a scary movie that maybe your parents won't let you see. What's that doing in the Bible? Oh, it's kind of weird. But actually, it isn't meant to be creepy or scary when we listen to how that happens. How does it happen that all these bones grow back into people again? Well, these dried up bones come back to life again because God tells them to. In there, it says that God says, I will bring spirit into you that you might have life. I will put muscles upon you and make the skin grow over you and put my spirit in you that you might have life and know that I am the Lord. See, dead, dried up bones can't can't go back to life again. They're just dead bones. But God's Spirit is so powerful that He could even bring dried up bones back to life. And so the story teaches us a lesson that without God, we'd be dried up all like bones. Without God, we wouldn't have any life. But God wants to fill us with His Holy Spirit, He wants to give us His life. When things seem to maybe be going badly, when maybe things don't feel like they're going right, when everything seems to go wrong, there's really actually only one thing that's wrong. We miss God. We miss Jesus. We need Him. We need God. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. With God, we can do so many things that we can't do by ourselves. And that's why he says, Oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may have life. 
with God, we can do the things that might seem to be too hard for us to do. Now, during this school year, I'm sure there'll be times in which you're going to need to learn to do things that you've never done before. Things that at first might seem to be too hard for you. But God doesn't say you have to do it on your own. You're not alone. You can do those things with his help. In the gospel, Jesus gives the two great commandments. He says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And those things aren't always easy for, to do. It's not always easy for grown-ups to do either. It's not always easy to love each other and to love God with our whole heart. Without God, it's hard. Maybe even impossible to love. But with God, with his Holy Spirit, we can. We can love. We can do all, all the things that he asks with his help. And so that's why we begin this school year asking for the help of the Holy Spirit at this Mass. And at the end of Mass, we're going to process back over to the school, and we're going to bless the school for this year. We're going to bless the school, bless your classrooms, and we're going to pray to God to send the Holy Spirit so that he will be at work in our school for the whole year long.